Good morning, members of the media. Welcome to our regular weekly media briefing. Today we focus on the issue of financial crimes, and we have um, featuring today the senior superintendent in charge of the financial investigations branch, Ms. Wendy Wilkinson, who will take us through today's briefing. Ms. Wilkinson. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the press. The Financial Investigation Branch, or FIB, of Trinidad and Tobago Police Service was established in 2011 to investigate and prosecute financial crimes and terrorism financing by individuals and organizations. Such crimes are identified as money laundering, terrorist financing, fraud, and corruption offenses, as well as illegal gambling. Money laundering is the process of taking the proceeds of criminal activity and making them appear legal. Laundering allows criminals to benefit by transforming a legally obtained gain into seemingly legitimate funds. The Financial Investigations Branch also has general responsibility for the investigation of all offenses under the Proceeds of Crime Act, Chapter 1127. The FIB conducts investigations into money laundering and terrorist financing based on intelligence reports received from the Financial Intelligence Unit of Trinidad and Tobago, the Fraud Squad, Organized Crime and Narcotics Unit, Criminal Gang Intelligence Unit, Special Branch, Criminal Investigations Department, and from the nine policing divisions. The FIB can also investigate matters highlighted in the media and through direct reports from members of the public. What has been our success to date? We look at cash seizures. We have had 75 cash seizures since our inception. The cash seize amount rounded off to the nearest dollar, and that's $9.7 million TT currency, and US, 564,000 US dollars in cash seizures. The value of the cash forfeited is a quarter million Trinidad and Tobago dollars. Um, in the cash forfeiture, Again, that's a quarter million dollars. We move to money laundering. There are 10 persons before the courts facing 47 charges for money laundering, including um, Ms. Vicky Budram, who you all know. The monetary value of the charges in Trinidad and Tobago currency, $11.2 million. Additionally, US $8,500. Canadian $1,070. We've also seized assets in the process of those investigations. Among the assets seized are two Mercedes-Benz vehicle, along with other make and model of vehicles. Restraint orders. Restraint orders have been obtained for assets inclusive of vehicles, land and buildings, land and financial accounts with an estimated value of $8 million TT. We've got matters at the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution. We have several files before the Office of the DPP, including cases involving a breach of restraint order, confiscation, money laundering, cash seizure forfeiture. We do have challenges and one of our major challenges, the financial investigation branch, is currently facing challenges in relation to the court's interpretation and computation of time with regards to cash seizure under the Proceeds of Crime Act, Chapter 1127. This situation has given rise to decisions being handed down by certain magistrates in certain courts which have led to judicial review proceedings being instituted by the state. So we are challenging some of the decisions. Stakeholders. There are several agencies that partner with the financial investigation branch and assist and inform the work we do. And they are namely the Financial Intelligence Unit, 
the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, the National Anti-Money Laundering Committee, Central Authority of the Attorney General's Office, Criminal Tax Investigations Unit, Customs and Excise, Immigration Department, Bankers Association of Trinidad and Tobago, Trinidad and Tobago Stock Exchange, Central Bank of Trinidad and Tobago, and Registrar General's Office. We have some recommendations, and namely, the adoption of civil for feature legislation to treat with unexplained wealth. Now I say unexplained wealth and you may wonder. So for instance, someone may own two high-end vehicles and can give no reasonable account of how they acquired that money to purchase the vehicles. If we get to go the way of civil forfeiture, the burden of proof would then be on the owner to explain how they accrued that wealth to make that purchase. And it will be up under the civil standards of proof to show the legitimacy of the funds. This will certainly help the effort of crime fighting against combating money laundering. We at the Financial Investigations Branch of Trinidad and Tobago Police Service will continue with all, working with all our stakeholders to reduce the incidence of white color or financial crimes and the threat of terrorism through investigation and prosecution of the offenders. So I thank you. Thank you, Senior Superintendent Wilkinson. The floor is open to, for questions from members of the media to the Senior Superintendent. some difficulties that, that the FIB faces, um, particularly in terms of investigating businesses that have no links or they, they, don't, they accept strictly cash. Um, how, how much of a red flag are these businesses given? And, and how difficult is it for you to investigate businesses like these? Well, the challenge I spoke of would be in unexplained wealth not necessarily um, people conducting business and the preferences for cash. Ideally, you would want a paper trail. It's what obtains in your first world countries and that makes following the dollar much easier. Well, you would admit though that um, it is quite easy for business, and I'm not talking about the guy who's selling orange at the side of the road, but for, for businesses to be operating uh, without the use of, of links, for them to be uh, infiltrated by those who seek to launder money? What I would say, a business, the owner of a business has the right to decide whether he wants links in his business or not. That's the choice of the person who has that business. Um, of course, as I, I go back and I repeat, ideally, the financial investigations branch would love for us to reach the stage where we have that paper trail. So, you know, you can use your credit card and use links so that plastic so that it can leave a trail as opposed to coming to make a purchase with a bulk of cash. But that's ideally what we at the FIB would like to see. And in terms of making um, cash deposits, uh, what's the, the, the maximum or, or what amount would trigger a red flag for the, the FIB? Well, I won't say tr what it triggers okay. for the FIB. The banks, the financial institutions, they have their um, trigger that they look at. Some a $10,000 deposit, you know. So um, the Bankers Association, um, I think you would have followed, they have been rigorous in asking their members to practice due diligence. So uh, we leave that in their capable hands because that they have regulations to follow with that in compliance with money laundering efforts. Now you said you made mention, uh, uh, oh sorry, you made mention of the, the FIB investigating matters that come through the media. Mm -hmm. um, the Panama Papers issue, have any of the revelations that have been made in the media uh, with the local links um, been uh, investigated or, or raised an eyebrow at the FIB? Well, you know, I cannot go into who we are investigating well, who, and what have you. Is it 
But we thank you for um, bringing um, the Panama Papers to the fore. And I would wish to let you know that it is engaging our attention at this point in time. All the allegations or particular allegations? It is engaging the attention of the Financial Investigations Branch. At this time. At this With time. With the assistance of international bodies as well, or strictly for now, the FIB? Well, we have, as I mentioned, the central authority out of the Attorney General's office. That is the agency we would network with and prepare documents and have them through the Mutual Legal Assistance Treaty that, to which Trinidad and Tobago is a signatory, make requests to external parties for information, for intelligence and information. And, and this unit also um, deals with extradition, so are we possibly looking at, at, at that as well? Well, all forms that, um, if wealth is taken external to the country and um, or somebody else has wealth here, similarly, how we would make a request to have a mutual legal assistance request made, that option is open to the country and an external country to make the same request of us. And it has happened. They have made requests. So it's a mutual, as I said, mutual request. Well, I just want to make sure. And um, lastly, on, on this issue from me, um, concerning the Panama Papers, has anyone local or connected locally been questioned so far? As I said, um, I repeat, we are, it is engaging our attention at this point in time.